Welcome to Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm your host, Dale Johnson. This show will take you inside your Lincoln Fire Department, a $26 million city agency made up of 294 skilled men and women. And it's very important that you feel confident when there's a fire at your home and you need medical attention that the people jumping off that fire engine and pulling up in the ambulances are well-trained and capable of rescuing you and your loved ones. As you watch our show today, you may have some questions or some comments, and we want you to act on those questions and comments by emailing us at 5CityTV. So as we go along, jot down your questions and let us know. We'll find the answers out for you. Your accredited, award-winning Lincoln Fire Department is led by a very qualified fire chief, Dr. Niles Ford. He brought his wife and two children to Lincoln just over two years ago from the Atlanta, Georgia area. Chief, thank you very much for coming. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. What drew you to Lincoln? Well, <clears throat> Lincoln had, had, had some fantastic attributes. I had visited here once before. And uh, the community is, is, very, is a beautiful community. Uh, the school system is a, is a wonderful school system. And most importantly, the fire department is an A1 class A fire department. And, and it's an accredited organization. Had the ambulance service actually um, the ambulance service was actually one of the things that drew me to the organization because the former organizations I had worked for did not have one and I always felt like it was necessary in our community to have ambulance service inside the fire department because it because what I felt like would make it a stronger and more dependable service. Firefighting is a business. It's it a is. city department. So what challenges do you face in running this business, this department? Well, there are several challenges on a daily basis and, and, and strategic standpoint, not just daily basis. Uh, our people have to stay trained. Uh, uh, people always ask where our firefighters at when they're not running calls, what are they doing? Well, they're training most of the time. A lot of what our people do is training. Uh, so it, it's very important for our people to train and stay competent so we can maintain a culture of competence so we can be extraordinarily effective at what we do. Um, we're no different from in, no different from any other agency or even business for that matter. Um, we're dealing with fiscal issues just as the city is, just as um, common businesses are. So if if I'm going to discuss one issue that might be a, a issue that is long standing and probably long standing in most communities, it is fiscal issues. Just just trying to make sure um, we provide the highest level of service for the amount of money that the city can afford. We'll talk about training a little yeah. bit later on in the show. Absolutely. We have Italian Chief Leo Benish joining us a little bit later on. New Year, Chief. Yes. New challenges. Yes. What do you see in 2010? Well, we, we see our challenges as opportunities, and, and we have a lot, of, a lot of great opportunities. Some of the things that, that we plan on doing this, this year is beta testing a, a uh, medic supervisor position. That's to help improve, the, to uh, help continuously improve our services, uh, give, a, give a little bit more oversight in that area. Uh, something that we're not scared of because we want to do the best job we possibly can do at what we do. Um, we're looking at um, putting a, a several things in place, um, possibly uh, expanding Station 8 in order to have three apparatuses down there. But we have, we have a, a very exciting year that we're going into in 2010. We've included uh, several new performance perspectives and training to, uh, to calculate and maintain our competence in that level. So we have a lot of great things going on, a lot and, of great things. And the city, Chief, growing the growing. way it is. Yes, it is. You just have logistical challenges, geographic challenges. Yes, we do. In fact, uh, not too long ago, we, we brought one, in, one of our fire captains in. Uh, he was, he was a, a ladder truck captain. But his background was computer information systems. He, he actually got a degree from the University of Nebraska in uh, CIS. And we put him to work to evaluate our system, to look at the entire system from a geographic standpoint. So he does GIS work. Uh, one of the things that we do know is that, that the population has grown. The geographical area that we respond to has grown as well. Um, but the, the fire department has not done that in a linear way. Uh, we haven't stayed parallel with the city. Uh, great, great extent that has to do with physical issues as we talked about earlier. But so we need to start putting things in place to prepare to make sure that we can start catching up with the needs of this community. 
Uh, when, when we don't have uh, apparatuses and stations in certain areas, it extends response time. When you extend response time, you put people's, our, our job, make no doubt about it, make, let there not be a doubt about this, our job is all about life safety. It's all about saving lives and securing property. So the longer time it takes us to get there with the great competent people that we have, um, the more damage that's caused and possibly death. So we're trying to make sure that we can codify in, in, a, in a very uh, competent way the needs for the growth of us as, as the city grows. Chief, thank you very much. We'll have you back before the show is over. Absolutely. Right? Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll bring in a couple of your uh, firefighter, your fine firefighter and paramedic uh, staff to answer some questions from Park Middle School kids. And we'll have that in just a moment. Here you go. <laughs> Whoa. This concession business is mind-boggling. Even for a genius like me, Dr. R. E. Cycle. I'll tell you what's not tricky, and that's recycling. There's a city drop-off site near you, or you can subscribe to a curbside service. Find out more at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword recycle. It's a good way to show people just how smart you are. <laughs> okay, who's next? Welcome back to Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm your host, Dale Johnson. It's time for Ask a Firefighter here on the show. Everybody loves a firefighter, so we thought that uh, you should meet a couple of the fine members of the Lincoln Fire Department and the Emergency Rescue Team. Firefighter paramedic Jamie Pospisil is here. Jamie, good to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. And firefighter Tony Chap. Tony, good to have you here, too. Thank you. We've asked uh, Park Middle School sixth graders to be part of the show, too, to come up with some questions for Jamie and Tony today. First, we'd like to thank Park Principal Ryan Zabawa and the teachers and the parents and all the students at Park Middle School for helping us. Let's listen to the first question. Do firefighters ever get scared when going into a fire? Tony, why don't you take that question? Well, any firefighter that says they've never been scared before is probably not telling the truth. Um, there's certain instances where you'll be scared, but you still follow through with what you're supposed to do because of your training, and you rely on the equipment that uh, you have, your, your gear. It's, we have state-of-the-art gear. Uh, it, it protects you, and you, just, you have to really rely on all that and the people that are behind you backing you up. Um, it, it's, it gets intense at times, but uh, you just follow through and keep doing your job. Training's key. Though, yes, it Tony. is. It's the training that keeps keeps your you learn to keep your fear in, intact, under control. So use it to your advantage. Yes. All right. Second question from Park Middle School. What do firefighters do when they're not working? Good question from uh, Park Middle School. All right, Jamie, why don't you answer that question? That is a great question. We start our day at about six thirty in the morning, and we brief with the other crew. We learn how their day was. We learn if we need to order EMS supplies or if there's any fire equipment that needs to be worked on. Uh, at 7.15, we have a teleconference and the battalion chiefs let us know about training, um, what our duties are for the day. And um, our captain will then follow up that meeting and let us know his intentions for the day. Again, more training. Keep in mind that at any point in time in that 24 hours, we are available to run EMS and fire calls. So we may schedule the day with lots of training, but again, we we're interrupted quite frequently with providing those services. Uh, there, it is it's the responsibility of the engine or the truck typically to make a meal. So that's why sometimes you see fire trucks and fire engines at the grocery store. One person will be picked to make a meal for the day. It uh, helps with teamwork and camaraderie. And we prepare the meal, uh, we have lunch together, and again, we're just building our team. In the afternoon, again, if we're not running calls, it's more training. It could be hazmat training, uh, ropes and knots, uh, search and rescue, different types of fire techniques, and lots of EMS type training. Anytime after 4.30, we work out. Uh, physical fitness is a high priority at the fire department. So every day we try to get some, for, some form of fitness, whether it's cardio or strength-based training. Uh, again, we always try and get a second meal in because we want to keep our energy up 
for the calls. Um, in the evening, we'll have some downtime, and I am normally catching up on charts or uh, doing some more EMS training. And if I do get a little bit of downtime before the evening runs start coming in, that's great. So we're, we're very busy, needless to say. Regardless of cooking a meal or in the middle of training, when the siren goes off, you drop what you're doing. Absolutely. And you, you're on a call. Absolutely. The only time that we would not respond is if we're already providing services to somebody else. And that's why we have multiple stations and multiple for providers to cover for that. Jamie, thank you very much. Thank for you. In. You did a fine job of explaining what a firefighter does. And kids are curious. That's a very good question to know it what a, a firefighter question. or an EMS professional does when they're not on call. And Tony, thank you very much, emphasizing training and the fact that uh, firefighters are human too. They have emotions and they are trained yes, to are. control those emotions. Uh -huh. So it's good to have Tony and Jamie in. And we'll have other firefighters here on the show for you to, to get to know and they'll answer your questions in the months to come. A uh, reminder too that if you have any questions or comments, we invite you to uh, email. You've been seeing an email address on the bottom of your screen and we will do our best to answer those questions for you. We'll have more of Lincoln Fire Rescue in a moment. To volunteer, go to 2010specialolympics.org. Welcome back to Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm your host, Dale Johnson. Lincoln Fire and Rescue is constantly looking for smart, strong, determined people to acquire the skills that are necessary to become firefighters and emergency services professionals here in Lincoln. In cities Lincoln's size, the ratio of citizens to firefighters is about 600 to 1. In Omaha, it's 617 to 1. In Des Moines, it's 607 to 1. In Lincoln, it's 846 to 1. So the Lincoln Fire Department, Fire and Rescue, is a very lean, efficient, stretched city department. New classes of firefighters and ambulance staff are always being trained. Deputy Chief Leo Benish is with me today on the show, and we're going to talk about the recruiting class and the training of firefighters. Chief, good to have you here. Thank well, you very much. Me. Uh, Tony talks about training. Everybody I ever talk to with the Lincoln Fire Department always emphasizes training. It's ongoing. And at the moment, there are men and women who are training or would like to train for a position in the Lincoln Fire Department. Yes, currently we have a class of seven that's ongoing right now. Seven of those folks started with us approximately uh, three months ago. Their training started with 13 grueling weeks of training with the training oh, division, specifically on fire and EMS related topics. And after those 13 weeks, one of the individuals who was not a paramedic was sent out to the station. He will be a floater. And the other six firefighters are in five weeks of very intense training for paramedicine. They start on a Tuesday morning and they work Tuesday through Saturday. And on Thursdays during that week, they go to a didactic training with the training division and they're there for the entire day. Chief, from beginning to end, from the time I sign up, I want to be a firefighter, until I get to the process where either I'm selected or I'm not selected, how long is that process? Um, that can be a little bit varied. We start taking applications at city personnel at the city county building in mid-June and we go through uh, the, from the middle of June till about the end of June and when we bring you on, and we give you a written test, and then from the written test we go to a physical ability test, and from those applicants we screen out those individuals that don't meet the qualifications that we need, and then from there we bring you in and we'll give a oral interview, and you'll have a, a couple of opportunities with an oral interview with the board, and then we bring you in with a second interview that it has a chief officer, and then we'll bring in uh, citizens from the community that have come in to assist us with our hiring practices. And then at that point, we will uh, have you on a list for those that we want to hire. And we can't hire just at any time during the year. We have to have openings, and those openings usually happen through attrition, through retirements. And then we'll bring you in and start your training process, which is 13 weeks of very intense training with the training division. 
And after those 13 weeks, then you're assigned to an apparatus and you'll become a floater for the, for the duration of six months. Currently, we have seven incumbents that are trained. Of those seven, six are paramedics, and those six paramedics have had five weeks of very intense training. They've been evaluated running calls, and during, that, during those five weeks, one day per week, we bring them into the training division and have very intense didactic training uh, with the training division staff. Training is ongoing. Once you're a firefighter, you're always being trained. That's correct. Our, our focus is to be prepared for anything that might come our way, and the, that training is given to us specific to some of the trends that are happening in the world around us. Uh, it could be have to deal with terrorism or changes in EMS. Uh, they're forever doing studies and changes, and we try to stay with the times and continue to upgrade our services as time allows us. And I mentioned some specialties, urban search and rescue. We do, we do have an opportunity here in Lincoln to have a very specialized team of 189 folks. We do have a few folks that assist us from Omaha Fire as well as some civilians that assist us for those positions that uh, firefighters do not have specific training for. Uh, as an example would be possibly a canine handler or somebody that has an engineering background that we don't currently have on the department. You've been a firefighter for how many years? For Chief? about 24 years. All right. Training has probably developed, it changed, changed, evolved. It's changed a lot. It's evolved a lot. The, the hours of required training has just grown immensely. Thank you very much, Chief. I appreciate you coming in. It was a pleasure to be here, and, and any time we can be of service, we'll do that. In the weeks to come, we may have you back, because as I said, training is an ongoing uh, process for the Lincoln Fire Department. We'll have you back and talk more specifics about training through the Lincoln Fire Department. Battalion Chief Leo Benish. Leo, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. We'll have more in just a moment. We'll have the Fire Chief uh, return in just a moment on Lincoln Fire and Rescue. Your Lincoln Fire Department offers fire safety programs. They'll install smoke alarms for people who are not able to do it themselves. Uh, they provide CPR training and travel all over the world, really, providing specialized urban search and rescue skills at disaster sites, including 9-11 in New York and Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. In the months to come on this show, we will feature some of these services and we will focus on skills and responsibilities of your Lincoln Fire and Rescue. So remember to email us with your comments. You've seen the email on the bottom of your screen throughout the show here, and we really do want to hear your questions and your comments, how we can improve the show, and questions that you may have for your Lincoln Fire Department. Chief, this was a great idea, and I'm so glad we finally launched it, got it going on Five City TV, and I'm looking forward to shows in the months to come. We're very excited about it. Very, very excited. This is good for everyone, the community it, and the fire department. It's very important for the community to understand that we believe that they have one of the greatest fire departments in the country. And the more they understand it and appreciate the dedication of the men and women that you have working for you every day, mm. the better we are as a community. So thank you very much for this idea. Thank you. So on behalf of Fire Chief Niles Ford and our guests today on the show, the men and women who make up your Lincoln Fire Department. Thank you very much for watching Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I'm your host, Dale Johnson. Here's the fire. I want you to attend the metal.